Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Awesome Finds. Now, in today's program, I'm going to be showcasing some releases, brand new releases from Water Tower Music, as well as some records that I picked up myself. So to get things started, we're going to check out the soundtrack to Motherless Brooklyn. This is amazing jazz, bop era jazz, you know what I mean? That kind of early 50s, mid 50s kind of sound. Uh, directed by Edward Norton, also stars him. And there's also this song called Daily Battles that was actually released as a single, which I, I also have here. Now, some people had issues with the sound quality of the single release. I didn't really have that problem. But what this is, is there's, there's Daily Battles, which is Flea and Tom York. On this whole soundtrack, it's totally out of place. I love the song, but it doesn't really flow with the rest of the jazz, right? jazz music. But the version performed by Wynton Marcellus uh, and these other gentlemen is fantastic. It, it, it takes what they did and then obviously does it in the same sort of bop style. And it's oh, so, so good. I haven't seen the film yet. Uh, I feel like it came and went in theaters. I'm not sure why. I hear it's good, though. Uh, it also came with a an uh, insert sheet and a little note from uh, Edward Norton. And yeah, and you got credits and, and whatnot. I'll show you guys the record itself. Came on black vinyl. Here is side A, and there is side B. Yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed the music, and I can't wait to see the film. Uh, whenever it comes out on streaming, I'll definitely check it out. But in the meantime, check out this soundtrack. It's very good. Up next, I have a soundtrack to a film I did see, Joker. Now, this is the FYE exclusive three-color splatter vinyl variant, uh, limited to 750 copies. It also came with an insert here. It's got uh, credits and thank yous and a very nice picture. Let's see here. Yeah, I'll show you the vinyl real quick. So it's basically clear with just like spots of, of, of the uh, other colors. So you have red, green, and like a purplish pink color. And then there's side B. Now, if you've seen the film, you know that <laughs> it is not a happy-go-lucky movie. And so the soundtrack really reflects this. And it's always cool to hear the isolated music because, you know, obviously when you, you're, it's the first time you, you're seeing something, there's all kinds of things going on. You're trying to keep track of the story and you're watching the performances. And sometimes, at least for me, the music sort of gets lost, but not that I don't uh, hear it. It's just it adds to the the mood and the feeling. And it wasn't until I listened to the soundtrack by itself that I realized how much it really did lend to the atmosphere of the film. Because if you've seen it, it's very grimy, grungy, uh, late, or no, early 80s. Uh, it's unpleasant. And that's what the music is. It's kind of hard to listen to actually because of that. It's, it, it is abrasive, but it also is very delicate at times, which I think, uh, who was this, Hildur? I'm not gonna say his last name, but uh, fantastic, fantastic work. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I really recommend obviously checking out the film. Let me know if you've seen it, what you thought of it. In terms of the soundtrack, oh my goodness. It is not feel good party music, but if you like a dark brooding instrumental borderline classical music, this will certainly be up your alley. Check it out. All right, last up, I have three soundtracks to the Harry Potter films. This is for the last two, well, I guess, no, last three films, last two books, last three films. And the first one we have here is for the Half-Blood Prince. This is the Books A Million edition, limited to 2,000 copies worldwide. Opening up, you have credits on one side, a great photo in the middle. And then you have words by Nicholas Hooper and David Yates, and on the back there. So here is record one with side A and side B. Brilliant ruby clear color, I like that. And let me fish out record two here. These gloves make it very hard. Here is record two, we have side C and side D. Overall, the music sounds great on here. Uh, it's very lush, 
I, you know, sometimes with colored vinyl, you never know what you're going to get, but I, th I thought it sounded very good. And, um, yeah, I like working to, uh, movie soundtracks. Uh, this especially is, is very conducive to working. It gets my creative juices going, whether I'm writing or I'm working on something very tedious, like, a like a, like in Photoshop or something. Uh, this, this really helps, uh, carry me along if you will. So yeah. Definitely check it out. And then up next, we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows Part 1. The score, it is also a gatefold. Very similar layout to the uh, Half-Blood Prince. Um, and this is the regular black edition. Let's see here. We have side A. And there is side B. And here we have side C and side D. Yeah, as you know, this is what the climax of of the book series, and I'm I'm happy that they were able to do this into two parts. I still wish Half Blood Prince would have been in two parts, uh, but it is what it is, and um, I really enjoyed this film as well. This was also yeah, also David Yates. So yeah, another great soundtrack to work to. And finally, out of the bunch, we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. This is the Books a Million, Second and Charles exclusive blue and yellow set, limited to 2,000 copies worldwide. It is also a gatefold. And there's a track listings on the back there. Ooh, I love that shot. That is so, so good. This was a great culmination to the whole film series. Really Really enjoyed that. I should rewatch these again. I watched them not too long ago, but it's always good to bring them out again. Here is side A, and there is side B. And here we go. We have side C and side D. Man, these look great too. I love how uh, for each of these um, different movies, they all have different. They all have different center labels. It's a subtle design work, but I really like that. Uh, yeah. So another solid. Uh, score in the Harry Potter series. Um, I do recommend it, especially if you like, like I said, like to work to uh, soundtrack music. Yeah, this sounds great. Even even being on colored vinyl, comparing the two, the black vinyl and, and this colored vinyl, I, I, you know, they both sound great. So if you can't get a hold of the limited edition, I'm sure you'll be very happy with the standard black edition. So yeah, that will do it for the Water Tower portion. I wanna thank Water Tower Music for sending me these records. Always very awesome. All of these releases are out now and they're available. So go check them out at your favorite retailer. All right, up next we have several records that I picked up uh, recently. I, I bought most of these. And first up, we have Anamanaguchi's USA. Uh, as you know, this was my top pick for 2019. I just fell in love with this album and I I just decided, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna buy it because I need to have it, I need to own it. I love this record and when it came, I was just in awe about how gorgeous this cover is. It's a super, super high gloss gatefold. I love this sort of phased out uh, lyrics in here, just like, uh, like you're getting too close to the computer screen. And then on the back there, man, just, just very, very gorgeous. It also came with these inner sleeves also high gloss. And then here's the second record sleeve. Now, from what I understand, there were several different vinyl variants to this pressing. I picked up the Bandcamp exclusive edition, so I bought it directly from Bandcamp. And it's this really beautiful splatter. Here is side A, there is side B. Here is side C. And finally, side D. So you guys already know what I think about the music. Uh, go check out my top 10 of 2019 for more details. But uh, what I did do though, when I checked out to buy this record, there was a little thing where you can leave a message to the band. So I was like, you know what? I'll just throw it out there. And I, and I said, um, thank you so much for making this record. It was my top pick of 2019. And then I put a link of, to the YouTube video. Well then, like I'd say like a week later, I got contacted by Bandcamp saying, hey, the band wants to invite you to their upcoming show in, at the end of February in LA. And I was like, awesome. And then I was put in touch with their manager. And then I just said, hey, by the way, um, I'm starting to, you know, I'm doing more interviews and I'm working with different labels. Would that be of interest to Polyvinyl and or the band? And their manager was like, yeah, yeah, the guys have time. 
they would like to stop by. So uh, fast forward to last week, I got to interview them and look for that video. We had a great time and then I ended up going to the show a couple days later. And what was cool is that they, they themselves had not seen this uh, vinyl variant. So they finally got to see it in person. So we had a great time hanging out. I think we, oh gosh, we must've talked for like two hours. It was, it was a good time. Uh, we touched on all sorts of subjects. So uh, look forward to that video. And uh, in the meantime, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out USA. I really, I really enjoyed this album. So up next, I got Boys Don't Cry by The Cure. This is from 1979. This was actually a later repress on Elektra Records. So I picked this up at uh, my local farmer's market. There's a couple of old timers that sell records and I've been looking for this LP for a long time. They wanted $40 for it, which I thought was a fair price. And uh, yeah, it's in fairly good shape. It does have some issues, some bending, some spine splits here and there. Uh, but overall it plays fantastic. And how can you not love that album art? Now, if you know your history, this was the Americanized version of their debut LP. It, it deleted some songs, rearranged some songs, and then added some singles to it. Uh, whether which one is better, I'll leave that up to for you guys to decide. And whenever I get uh, an original uh, debut LP, I'll, maybe, maybe I'll do a, a versus on that. So here we go, we got side A, or excuse me, side one, and there is side two. It really is one of those uh, must own, well, I don't know if this particular version is a must own, maybe the, uh, what is it, Three Imaginary Boys? Is that what, is that what it's called? It's, it's pink. I think that one is uh, definitely a must own. And it was funny, because they had other Cure albums as well. Uh, but some of those, some Cure albums are worth a lot, and other ones, people just, <laughs> you can't even give them away, so. They're a funny band. I, I look forward to collecting more of their albums. Also from the same place, I got LL Cool J's second album, Bad, otherwise known as Bigger and Deffer. This is from 1987 on CBS Records. And what's really funny is that he will rap over oldies music, like there's rock around the clock, and he, <laughs> he raps over that, these samples. Uh, and it's so strange to me, but you know, I guess if I think back, that was like 30 year old music. It wasn't that outrageous. Also, uh, he has a slow song on here called, what is it? I Need Love, I think. Yeah, I Need Love. I really like that song. So um, let's see, I think this is side one. This is the bigger side. And then this is the deafer side. <laughs> Good time. So yeah. Um, yeah, definitely worth checking out. If you're a fan, if, if you're new to his music, I think this is a worthy follow-up to his debut album. All right, so these last three records all came from Amoeba. I did a big trade. I brought down a whole sack of records that I just wasn't listening to. I had them up on Discogs for a while. They weren't selling, so I was like, let's just see what I can get for these. And I ended up getting like $140 in trade, which is incredible. And they took every single record, which I was shocked. But th these were all in fairly good shape, either uh, new or just like barely played records. And I ended up getting the Slow Rush the day it came out. So this was Valentine's Day, 2020. So I got the Slow Rush and then I got uh, by Tame Impala and then I got these other three records. I also got To Tame a Butterfly, or sorry, To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar, but I haven't listened to it yet. So I didn't want to bring it up and talk about it, but I also picked up that album as well on the same trip. So this first record is a Journey compilation. This is from you know, 1979, I guess? Yeah, it must be from 1979. Uh, this was like in the beginning. So this was 1975 to 1977. And these, it's a double LP and it spans the album's Journey, Look Into the Future and Next. I had this way back when, this was collection 1.0 before I moved to LA, and it was one of the records I got rid of, and I always regretted it because I thought it was so cool. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, I gotta get it, I gotta get it. It is a gatefold. But what I didn't realize is that I have all three of their first albums. So, oh well, I still really recommend this compilation, uh, especially if you find a good price on it and, and you don't wanna pick up or you haven't been able to pick up the first three records, or for some reason you just kind of want the best of, uh, yeah, I recommend this collection. So let's see here. Let's take a look at the vinyl itself. 
Oh, I did it right. Here is side one, and there is side two. And here we have side three and side four. Up next, I have Trout Mask Replica by Captain Beefheart and his Magic Band. Uh, gosh, when was this originally released? 1969. This is the Third Man Records reissue. This is on standard black vinyl. I love this gatefold, by the way. Look at that, opening it up. And then there's the back cover. Such great photography. Love, love this jacket. I think, what do they call it? Tip on sleeve. Very, very sturdy. Uh, it's like a paperboard, not like a cardboard, but like a cardstock. Very heavyweight. And uh, it just, it looks fantastic. Also came with this uh, insert. It's got lyrics and whatnot. Yeah, I'll show you guys the, the vinyl real quick. It is a double LP. Here is record one. And it's on Bazaar. I love that. Third Man Bazaar. And let's see, yeah, there's side one. There's side two. Side three. Side four. So yeah, I'm sure you're curious to, to know what I think about this record. And I'll preface it by saying the first time I heard this, I, I was prepared for something like completely awful, off the wall, uh, just incredibly abrasive. And when I listened to it, I was like, oh, this isn't so bad. It's a little, it's a little dissonant, but it's not that bad. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's my favorite record, but there is something about it. The fact that um, this was all rehearsed and, and notated, written out, there is a sophistication. There's a level of discipline that I think gets lost when you first hear it. Like you just think it's, oh, this just sounds bad. But I think when you, if you go into it knowing that this was all on purpose and they meant it to sound this way and it is absurdist and it is sort of commenting on the current state of music at that time and probably other things I don't know yet because I haven't really completely dove into this album all of a sudden it, it becomes much more than just a bunch of noise it, it's fascinating it really is fascinating needless to say I thought I would hate this record more but I actually enjoy it um again it's not my favorite record it's not something I'm going to put on to relax to but in terms of like art and in terms of of something that evokes a feeling out of me wow this record is is uh phenomenal it is it is so interesting to listen to there it keeps it's hard it's very distracting actually it's hard for me to not pay attention to it it, it really it really demands attention while it may not be the greatest album in my book it certainly deserves to be where it is in in our collective appreciation of, of of albums you know what i mean like i forget how high it is up on rolling stones and i know for a lot of people it is a very important record at the same token i can also understand why people think it's terrible <laughs> i see both sides so either way uh, i'm looking forward to diving into this more uh yeah i'd say check it out if you haven't already if you have if you love it if you hate it let me know why Lastly, I got Kit A by Radiohead. This is a relatively recent repress. And yeah, this is the first time I've, I've owned a copy of it. I had a burn CD for the longest time. This is a gatefold. I love this art. And there's the back. It also came with these custom printed inner sleeves. There we go, with some credits on one side. Show you guys the vinyl real quick. Just your uh, standard black vinyl. Here we go, side A, or alpha, side beta, and we have side gamma, and side delta. So yeah, listening to this again on vinyl was such a treat. I adore this record. It is up there with OK Computer. They're incredibly different records, but I, I love them for different reasons. Motion Picture Soundtrack, one of my favorite songs on here, and How to Disappear disappear completely also fantastic um i will eventually do a full-on review of this record as well as a making of and all that jazz so you know stay tuned for more in-depth thoughts on it but just know that i i love this record it is one of it is totally worth having on vinyl i especially love uh having it on a double lp uh, 12 inch release and yeah really worth checking out
All right, everybody, that will do it for this time around. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to let me know which of these records were your favorites and why. And if any of them you plan on picking up, be sure to let me know that too. Until then, I'm your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey everybody, thanks again for watching this episode of Awesome Finds. Now if you want to see more, I have a playlist right there, as well as a video that YouTube will choose for me.